بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر خالد ادریس آئی ایم اے کنسلٹنٹ ریڈیالوجسٹ ان دس ویڈیو آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو شیئر اے ڈاپلر اسٹڈی اف سب کلیوین اسٹیل سنڈروم وچ واز ڈائگنوز ان اے پیشنٹ وچ واز ریفر ٹو اے ریڈیالوجی سینٹر فار کروٹ ڈاپلر اسٹڈی فیو ڈیز بیک اے 52 ایئرز اولڈ میل پیشنٹ پریزنٹڈ وتھ دی ہسٹری اف پین ان لیفٹ آرم اف این اون وچ ایگریویٹس وین ہی اسٹارٹس ایکسرسائز ان دی مارننگ This pain was also associated with dizziness and vertigo. Before discussing the uh, Doppler study in this patient, let's have a look on sub uh, subclavian steel phenomena so that you can better understand the Doppler findings. As you know, the left, uh, left subclavian artery directly arises from the arch of aorta and right subclavian artery arises from the brachiostalic trunk, which in turn arises from the arch of aorta. and vertebral artery arises from the first part of the subclavian artery when the uh, heart pushes the blood within arch of aorta then blood reaches to the brain through common carotid artery as well as vertebral artery so the direction of the blood flow in both common carotid artery as well as in the vertebral artery is the same but when there is severe stenosis in proximal part of the subclavian artery then volume of the blood that enters from the arch of aorta to the subclavian artery is reduced and blood flow and pushing pressure within the vertebral artery is also reduced as a result of which blood starts moving to and fro within the vertebral artery and doesn't reach to the brain properly through the vertebral artery now when this patient with severe stenosis at the proximal part of the subclavian artery starts exercise then uh, requirement of the blood to the upper limb is increased but blood that enters from the arch of aorta to the subclavian artery is not sufficient so in this situation when there is increased requirement of the blood to the upper limb blood starts moving down from the vertebral artery to enter into the subclavian artery so the presence of severe stenosis in the proximal part of the subclavian artery and reversal of the blood within the vertebral artery is called a subclavian steel phenomena now let's have a look on the route of the blood in this phenomena blood that enters into the vertebral artery of the normal side uh, reaches to the basilar artery from basilar artery part of the blood enters into the posterior circulation but rest of the blood moves down into the vertebral artery of the abnormal side and reaches into the subclavian artery now in a single sentence when there is severe stenosis in the proximal part of the subclavian artery then blood that enters in within the vertebral artery of the normal side starts moving downwards in the vertebral artery of the abnormal side and then reaches into the subclavian artery this is called subclavian steel phenomena Uh, now let's see the Doppler study in this patient. Uh, this is a common carotid artery of the right side. On the right side of the screen, this common carotid artery is running towards the brain. We have tilted the color box towards the heart. In these settings, the red color within the common carotid artery shows that blood is flowing. Uh, from heart towards the brain when we applied the pulse doppler it showed the normal waveform within the common carotid artery right sided uh, right sided internal carotid and external carotid arteries were also normal uh, with respect to the color as well as the spectral doppler pattern uh, then we traced the vertebral artery on the right side when we put the color box over the vertebral artery you can appreciate the red color uh, within the vertebral artery with the same settings of the color box this means that direction of the flow within the right sided vertebral artery is the same as in the common carotid artery now we applied the pulse doppler to the vertebral artery it had normal low resistance waveform 
Then we started the examination on the right, uh, on the left side of the neck. Uh, we traced the left-sided common carotid artery. It was showing normal color as well as spectral pattern. The left-sided internal carotid and external carotid arteries were also normal. Then we trace the vertebral artery. Now you can well appreciate that within vertebral artery, there is alternate in red and blue color. So this alternate red and blue color means that there is to and fro movement of the blood within the vertebral artery, which suggested the presence of subclavian steel syndrome. So this patient was asked to have an exercise of the upper limb uh, for few minutes. After 5 minutes of exercise, the study was repeated again. Now vertebral artery, you can appreciate, is completely filled with the blue color, with the same settings of the color box. It means now blood is flowing in opposite direction. The direction of the blood has reversed within the vertebral artery. Now when we applied the pulse Doppler over the vertebral artery, it had uh, the waveform uh, below the baseline, which means that there is also complete reversal of the spectral waveform. Then we tried to localize the area of stenosis within the subclavian artery. In this image, you can appreciate that there is an area of sui stenosis. And distal to the stenosis, uh, the waveform is a tardus parvus waveform. This waveform is a typical post stenotic type of waveform. So all these findings, reversal of the blood within the vertebral artery, presence of the area of stenosis and tardus parvus waveform distal to the stenosis all confirm the diagnosis of subclavian steel syndrome. I hope you like this case. Thanks for watching.